The sign technique for anti-grade femur is shown in this animated video. The approach to the bone entrance is listed on the screen at this time, and we've gone over that in the technique video. We use the trochanteric approach. The entrance point is between the posterior third and middle third of the greater trochanter. This femur does not have the usual anterior bow. The hole is made using a curved awl. Look at the curve of the awl to be sure you don't penetrate the cortex distally. There are pointed reamers and blunt reamers. The smaller reamers are pointed so they can penetrate from the metaphysis to the canal of the femur. Rotate the reamer in a clockwise direction when inserting the reamer and when removing the reamer. Do not oscillate the reamer. This is the blunt nose reamer, which can follow the tract. Ream until chatter about four centimeters in the isthmus. Choose a nail two millimeters smaller than the reamer that caused that chatter. Save the bone from the flutes of the reamer and use your gloved finger rather than an instrument to remove it. The nail is then set up using the locking bolt and the L handle. Note where the curve of the nail will be when you set up the locking bolt and L handle. In the anti-grade approach, set up the locking bolt, L handle, and nail so that the proximal bend is directed anteriorly. In each approach using the sign nail, the orientation of the proximal bend of the nail is different. Tighten the locking bolt using the wrench and check this periodically throughout insertion of the nail. We then set up the target arm so that the distal interlock can be obtained. Place the distal end into the groove of the middle extension and then attach the middle extension to the proximal extension. The proximal extension is then attached to the L handle using the shoulder bolt and tightened. Note the button that can be pressed to change the length of the distal extension to match the size nail you intend to use. A set screw, which does not show in this video, is used to stabilize the distal extension. The distal extension is then placed over the slot in the nail and the adjustment screw is tightened. Remove the target arm before inserting the nail. The nail is inserted using rotation. Please use the tissue protector so that the nail does not touch the skin. The one and a half degree bend is crucial and as you rotate the nail, it will create a larger track. If the nail does not go in easily, tap it lightly with a mallet and then rotate after every two taps. If the nail becomes stuck, remove the nail and ream larger. It is very important to allow the nail to rotate as it will as the proximal bend enters the greater toe canner. This is a very important maneuver because if you don't do this, you can create a femoral neck fracture. The distal interlocking is done by first making an indent into the skin where you intend to make the skin incision. The incision is carried down to the bone and all soft tissue is removed from the bone. The cannula is then inserted directly on the bone. Do not hammer the cannula. 
The small drill guide is placed through the cannula and the pilot hole is driven through one cortex, the near cortex. You can see on this video uh, placement of the drill bit. The hole is then enlarged using the step drill and the large drill guide. Note the step drill as it proceeds through the cortex. It is important to follow the pilot hole or it will not proceed and when the step drill engages the slot in the nail, stop because you will make the step drill dull if you continue to twist. We have three slot finders, the curved, the solid and the cannulated and each has a specific use. Sometimes after drilling the hole and using the step drill, there's debris in the hole of the cortex. This is removed using the screw hole brooch. The screw hole brooch will not enter the slot in the nail. Insert the solid slot finder by pushing rather than by twisting. If the slot finder engages the slot in the nail, it will rotate 10 degrees and stop. This is the sign feel. If the solid slot finder does not enter the slot, don't keep poking around, remove the target arm and use the curved slot finder. Sometimes the cannulated slot finder will not go through the hole if, even though the solid slot finder goes through because the cannulated slot finder has a wider diameter than the curved slot finder. Use the screw hole brooch again. Once the cannulated slot finder is inserted, drill the hole in the far cortex. Remove the drill bit and replace it with the depth gauge. The depth gauge is used to mark the hole. Remove the cannulated slot finder and the small drill guide to accurately measure for the screw. Measure on two sides of the hole. Add five millimeters of screw length to the measurement on the cannula. This extra five millimeters of screw length will be used for stability of the screw as well as if the screw needs to be removed. Leave two threads sticking out on the far cortex and two threads sticking out on the near cortex. Rotate the target arm to be sure that the screw is in the slot of the nail. Compress the fracture site. This is described more fully in the technique video. If you place a second screw, put an alignment pin in the head of the most distal screw and proceed identically to the insertion of the screw in the second slot distally. The proximal interlocking screw is accomplished by drilling through both cortices at once. The step drill is used to enlarge the hole. The slot finders are not needed for the proximal interlock. The, the depth gauge is used to measure the length of the screw. Add five millimeters so the screw will extend two threads on the far cortex and two threads on the near cortex. Raise the cannula to see the screw proceeding because the bone is thinner in the greater trochanter than in the diaphysis. Consider where the end of your drill bit is so you do not penetrate the acetabulum. Insert the step drill to enlarge the hole and place the proximal screw.
If the nail becomes bent, the cannula may not line up on the bone. Adjust the target arm so the cannula rests on the bone. Remove the cannula, loosen the adjustment screw, and align the target arm so the cannula rests on the bone. Use a small drill guide and drill a hole in the near cortex. Use the large drill guide to enlarge the hole with the step drill. Use the solid slot finder to locate the slot in the nail. If the solid slot finder does not go into the slot, it will rotate freely or it won't ro rotate at all if it's stuck in the hole. Remove the target arm and use the curved slot finder to locate the slot in the nail. This will be a very important tool for you. Observe the curved slot finder. The curve can be adjusted 180 degrees to enter the slot in the nail. Rotation is very important when using the curved slot finder. The surgeon should have his hand on the L handle and the curved slot finder. Distal interlocking is achieved by aligning the hole in the bone with the slot in the nail. The target arm is used for longitudinal alignment. The curved slot finder is used for rotational alignment. The longitudinal slip is due to one of two things. Either the nail has slipped and gone farther into the bone or more prominent, or the reduction has been lost and the bone has slipped. The hole will not align with the slot of the nail unless the longitudinal malalignment is corrected. If the curved slot finder does not find the slot, either nail has slipped or the reduction has slipped. Remove the curved slot finder and proceed with the solid slot finder. If the solid slot finder is in the slot, it will rotate 10 to 15 degrees. This is a sign feel and you've met the challenge of placing the distal interlock. Remove the solid slot finder and place the cannulated slot finder into the slot. Insert the depth gauge through the cannulated slot finder. Replace the cannulated slot finder with the cannula. Measure the depth of the screw using the cannula, as noted before. Once the distal screw has been placed, reattach the target arm and proceed as illustrated earlier in the video.